Hey everyone, so today we're going to be going over the 2023 AP Physics 1 International Exam FRQ number 4. Um, so this is the long paragraph response, and let's get right into it. So this problem is saying a small block is sliding on a smooth horizontal surface as it travels in a circular path. So think about circular motion here against the inside of a cylinder with a rough inner wall as shown. So there, though there's no friction between the block and the horizontal surface but there is friction between the block and the vertical wall. So the first part of this problem wants us to determine the expressions for the following, um, the normal force and the force of friction in terms of all those variables. Um, so the first thing I wanna point out here is that it says uh, the normal force exerted on the block by the cylinder. Um, what it means here is this is the cylinder, so the vertical wall basically. Um, you don't wanna draw your diagram, your free body diagram as like force normal pointing up and force of gravity pointing down. That's not what you want. Instead, you want to draw it like this. The centripetal force is force normal, all right? Because it is the perpendicular force that is pointing uh, away from the surface, and your surface in this case is that vertical wall. All right, so we know force normal now is the centripetal force. And we know centripetal force is equivalent to mass times velocity over r, right? So we can just rewrite this. I'll do this to the side. Force normal. Let's use orange. So force normal will be equivalent to mass, which they want us to write as MO. And velocity square. So they want us to write velocity as VO or the speed of the block when it's VO. So VO squared. And then the radius is just R. So that's all you have to do for that part. So the next part says the uh, write up for the frictional force exerted on the block by the vertical wall uh, when it has the same speed VO. So I'll write this to the side. So we know that force of friction is just equivalent to mu times Fn. And look at that, force normal, force normal. We already wrote the equation for force normal. And we just need to write this in terms of having mu as well. And they want us to write mu as mu of uh, the coefficient of kinetic friction. So if we transfer all this over, we can just write force normal is equivalent to mu kinetic friction. And then everything up here, we can just bring down. So times mass VO squared over R. All right, so now let's get to the bulk of the problem. So for B, this is the cleared coherent paragraph response. Um, that can also contain equations and drawings. They want us to describe the changes, if any, to both the centripetal uh, and tangential accelerations as the block slides on the horizontal surface against the inside of the cylinder. Um, so just for time purposes, I won't like write every single variable out, um, but I'll try my best here. So the centripetal acceleration, I'll just address this first part. The centripetal acceleration is going to decrease. Now, why? Well, we know that friction, because there is friction, so friction will decrease speed, or in our case, velocity, right? And so if you look at our equation up here, this is the centripetal acceleration, because uh, centripetal acceleration is written as m times ac, right? So this is our ac part. This is the centripetal acceleration part that we're looking at. So if there is friction present and decreases, decreases the speed, right? What you'll find is that if this V value decreases because it's on the top, then your centripetal, uh, sorry, yeah, your centripetal acceleration will decrease given that R is constant. So we can write AC decreases if velocity decreases and R is constant. All right, so for this next part, we want to address the tangential acceleration. So this is a little bit more tricky than the centripetal acceleration because it's not very clear where it's coming from. Um, so the tangential acceleration, tangential acceleration. In our case, it is going to be decreasing. Now, why? Well, it's going to be decreasing because we want to look at our equation here. So we know that the velocity due to friction is going to be decreasing, right? Because we already talked about how centripetal uh, acceleration is going to be decreasing. So if this decreases, that's going to be leading to a decrease in the frictional force. Now, why is that important? So I'll just go write this out. So 
because AC decreases as a result of all of this up here. So maybe you want to repeat it just to be extra sure and not cut any corners. So because AC decreases, force of friction decreases. And this is important because force of friction is the tangential force. Now, what does that mean? Well, the tangential force is responsible for the acceleration, right? Just think about it. So if you have a block that is rotating in a spear cylinder thing, right? There's no other forces acting upon it except the force of friction in the direction of motion. So it's obviously going to be slowing down, right? Now, in our case, the acceleration, what we're really referring to is deacceleration. But because velocity is decreasing, the rate at which it's deaccelerating uh, is going to be decreasing because force of friction is also decreasing. All right, so now we can write just force of friction will be decreasing. And so because it is the force responsible for that deacceleration, we can write it will also lead to a decrease in tangential acceleration. All right, so that does it for this FRQ. If you guys learned something, make sure you subscribe, and thank you for watching.